Today we're going to take a look at Vimpack, NeoVim's new Build-in Plugin Manager that comes out in 0.12. 0.12 is not out yet, but Vimpack is already available in the nightly builds. So we're going to use that to try out Vimpack, while also using the config we built in the last video about NeoVim's new native LSP setup. So if you want to get a head start on Vimpack, stay with me here. Hi, my name is Marco, let's get started. This is the structure of the config we're going to use here as a starting point. As I said before, we built this in the last video about Vim's new way of setting up LSPs. If you haven't watched that, you can also do that, but just a quick recap here. So the structure is quite basic. We have this init Lua, that's our starting point for the configuration. It requires all the other modules we're going to use in this config. The LSP directory here contains the config for the Lua LS LSP server. And then inside this Lua folder, we have our config folder. These components get required in the init Lua. And finally, we have this pack folder where I manually put in this Tokunite plugin, just a color scheme. Yeah, and that's basically it. Oh, I actually forgot to show you the hidden files here. So let's do this again. So now we see there's also a Git folder here because this is a repository, but that's not that important here. But since the last video, I also put in this file here. Let's open this up. So this is basically a project-based LUALS configuration file here. This gets rid of the unknown BIM global and also gives you a little bit better auto-completion. But now let's actually take a look at Vimpack. So let's just create another folder here for our plugins to keep this organized. Uh, let's put it in Lua plugins. So let's actually get rid of the complete pack directory here. We're going to use git rm rf for this because I already put this into version control. And so I'm going to stage this for removal pack. So let's check the structure again. So now this pack folder is also gone. Okay, let's just open up NeoVim here. And now we got this error because actually we wanted to use the color scheme and we don't have it in our pack anymore. So let's fix that. For that, let's just open the init Lua. You can see this require color scheme here. Let's uh, look into the file here. This just was the command color scheme tokenize, but this doesn't work anymore because we just deleted the plugin. But let's grab that here. Now we're going to create a new file. Let's do Lua plugins tokenite Lua. Then we can paste this in here because we're going to need this later. But first, let's go up here and actually use Vimpack to install tokenite. You see Vimpack provides us with a few functions here. The first one is the add function, which takes a spec table and an options table. We're going to just use it in the most basic form, which can be a spec table, which only contains one string. And this string is actually the URL to a GitHub or another Git repository. It doesn't have to be GitHub, which contains a plugin. And let's just save this here. Now we actually have to call this code when we start a new Vim. So let's go back to the init file here and just do a new require. And this time it's not config, but it's plugins, took unite. Now let's save this actually and restart. And we get prompted to check if we want to install this plugin we just added here. So let's say yes to proceed. See it's installed and now it's actually activated. So that's all there is to it. It's quite minimal yet because there's no lazy loading and stuff like that. But if you don't have a ton of plugins, you can actually get away with this. So let's check out the help file. So here you get a little bit of an overview about what Vimpack is. You get some example workflows. You see here there are some different ways you can use Vimpack add. We just used the first one here. But you see you can also provide the actual keys for this table. So you can use the source table for this and also a plugin name. You can also specify a specific version or a specific branch you want to just target. And after this Vimpack call, you can use the plugin code. You can also actually pin plugins to a specific version as we saw before. If you don't get a branch, you can use a tag or a commit hash and you can of course remove plugins. So let's see what happens if we use Vimpack Dell to remove Tokenite. So let's run Vimpack. Dell and you need to provide a table with the names. Let's run this. Remove plugin tokenite.nvim. Let's go back to our init here. Just comment this out, save this file and restart and see what happens. Tokenite is not available anymore, so we don't see any tokenite. So let's just re-enable it by uncommenting this, writing again and restarting again. We get asked to install it again, confirm and it's available again. If you wanted to update our plugins, we could use Vimpack 
update. So then this new buffer here appears, uh, giving you an overview about all your plugins. We only have tokenize as a plugin and there's not an update available. That's why the heading says same. What we could do if there would be an update here, we could just write and save this buffer and then the update would go through. Or if we just quit the buffer and didn't write it, then the update would be aborted. So in our case, nothing will happen even if we save this. Let's do this. Nothing to update, you see on the bottom left. And that's how updating works. So there's no auto update mechanism provided by Vimpack by default. It's not configured anyways, but you could easily implement that yourself because there's the update command we just saw. We could do something like go to the end of this file and just call Vimpack update. And then on each restart, so let's write this and try this out. There should be this update function popping up. I just prefer to call this every once in a while if I want to update something or if I want to have a new feature I heard about on a subreddit or in a video or something like that. So I'll leave this out of my config personally. Oh, we actually didn't talk about the hooks here. So there's a pack changed pre and a pack changed hook. So this could be useful if you would use NVM tree setter, for example, where you have to run this TS install after each update. Yeah, let's just install tree setter just to see how this works. Yep, I've got a new shirt on. Well, I've got interrupted while recording and now I'm picking up where I left off a few days later. So let's move on. So first of all, let's get rid of the last line here because we don't want to update each time. We said that before. Also, we migrated the color scheme, I just noticed. So this file we don't need anymore. And now let's get back to what we actually wanted to do. And that was uh, installing NVIM tree setter. So Vimpack add actually takes a list with all the plugins we want to install in one call. The way we structured this here is we're going to use one file for one plugin. I simply like this structured approach a little bit more. Let's do Lua plugins NVIM tree setter dot Lua. And we're going to put our plugin code in here. So let's first take a look at this NVIM tree setter repo on GitHub here. We're going to go down there to the readme and then we see that there's this caution warning with two different branches and in the main branch the development is actually ongoing the master branch is frozen for now it's actually recommended to still use the master branch so we're going to use the version field in the bimpack spec to define that we want to pull from master here so back in our config file here we're going to use bimpack add again then this needs the list of specs so this time we're actually going to use this source property. We're going to paste in the GitHub link here. And we're also going to specify the version here. We want to have the master branch and that should be fine here. And again, on the GitHub repo of NVM Presetter, you get the instructions of how to set this up here. So if you scroll down to this module section, there's some example config here. I just put in a little bit of a minimized version of this here. And this should take care of the installation. Actually, we just have to add the require statement to the init.lua here because that's actually the way we structured it. So let's write this and then hit restart. And this installation message pops up again. You see installing plugins and also the parts of our Lua. And now there's one specialty about tree setter. So back in the readme of the NVM tree setter repo, we see this note here that we need to run TS update each time we update a tree setter. And for that, the pack change hook will be quite useful. So let's jump to the NVM tree setter file we just created. Let's go to the bottom here. Now I'm just going to paste the code. So we're creating an auto command here. When the event pack changed happens, this gets called. Got some description here, this auto command group. And then we define this callback function. This callback function gets handed this event that just happened. If this is the update event, then we just write something to the messages here. And then we're actually going to call this vim command, that's ts update. Yeah, then we do some more logging and that's basically it. This gets called each time the update happens. Okay, let's save this. And since there has been no update since the few minutes we installed TreatSetter here, and actually the master branch is frozen anyway, so I can't actually demonstrate this, but you get the idea, I think. So let's check again if we covered everything of vim pack. So let's write vim pack just into this file here. And we see there's the add function, we already covered this. The update function, we already covered as well. Then there's the get function that we didn't cover yet. So let's actually try this. So if we call this command, 
this doesn't really produce anything we can see, but we can wrap this in some vim print statement and actually run this again. And you see this provides us with a list of all the plugins and the active state and the path where it's installed and the spec actually that's used. So some more information under the hood, but there are actually not really some user commands for vim pack yet. But now that we've got this output here visible, we see what plugins are actually installed through Vimpack. And we can actually use Vimpack Dell to delete one of these packages and show the difference afterwards. So I'm just gonna write this out here again, Vimpack Dell. And this function actually takes a list of names here, as we can see with the signature help. Control S, by the way, in insert mode. If you've got the new native LSP setup here with the default keybinds. So let's just give it a list with one name and then tree setter. And now we can just run this again. By the way, I actually got this keybind here with leader X that I actually stole from TJ DeVries advent of new series. So let's run this. You see down here, it says Vim pack, remove plugin and Vim tree setter. And we can also really check if this really worked. So let's run this line here again. And we get this list and now we see that there's just tokenite installed. So let's delete these lines here, write this file. And if we now would restart Vim, we actually would reinstall Tweezer because we didn't change our config file, we just manually deleted the plugin. So let's try this, restart. And you see here, we get the prompt if we want to install Tweezer and we can just say yes. So if we actually wanted to remove it fully, we had to also comment out or delete this call so that we don't run the code we wrote in this nvim tree setter file in the plugins folder. So that's a quick overview, but let's undo this here. So now we are back at our configuration file we had with the nvim tree setter and tokenite. So basically there are no user commands yet in vimpack. I don't know if there will be any in the future, but I just had a little bit more fun. So I went ahead and actually wrote my own little plugin here that utilizes Vimpack and has some basic graphical user interface and some basic user commands here. And actually, I just didn't write any line of code in here. I just tried out Cloud Code the first time. And with Cloud Code, I created this packmanager.nvim plugin, which I would not recommend using in production. But if you want to take a look at this, I had a little bit of fun with that. We can use this here just to install the pack manager with Vimpack. So I'm just gonna put this here. Let's restart here. Gonna install this. And now we have a few user commands actually. They all start with pack. You can tap here. They are a bit excessive, I think. But for example, let's go to, I don't know, pack list. You see this list in the of the installed plugins. So you have this user command for that. You can easily bind a key to that. Of course, you could also call the Lua function, but as I said, I just was having some fun with Cloud Code, trying it out. So we can use this pack menu command here, and then this little pop-up pops up here, and we can actually use J and K here, or the arrow keys to go up and down, and we can just do something here. We can actually disable the plugin here from this list. So if I wanted to disable Tokyo Night, I just press enter, confirm this, and now we see what actually happened here. So pack manager moved the config file to another folder that's called disabled and it also removed the require line from the init Lua. So this plugin heavily relies on the structure we did here in this video. So it won't work if you put your plugins in another folder, for example, or if you don't even use single files for plugins. But let's see if this actually worked. Just restart this here. And now we see the tokenite plugin is not available anymore. So let's run pack menu again here. Let's go to point six. You can also use the number keys to jump there. Oh, there's the first bug you see. <laughs> we can uh, choose one plugin to enable. Let's see if this really enables or re-enables tokenite here. Nope. Okay. As you see, it's not production ready. So use at your own risk and use it just with a play configuration, I, I, I guess. So if you're still here, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you really want to support me, check out the membership options. Thanks for watching. See you around and take care.